What is going on everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 21st of June in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at any other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade as the month of June in 2019 is wrapping up. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there is if you enjoy the content, you find value in the content that I'm putting up here on YouTube, go down below and hit that like button. That's how you can repay me. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you haven't already joined our two communities down below in the description box, one of them being the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group, I highly advise you to get into those two communities communities guys you will find a ton of value in there and you'll be able to talk to a bunch of other traders and investors over 800 investors and traders in those two communities so without further ado let's just talk about what ended up happening today in the market starting off here with the S&P 500 we ended up closing down $3.72 down 0.13% and you guys read in the title of today's video that we did hit an all time high again in the S&P 500 at 2964.15 and yesterday if you guys were paying attention to the markets we actually hit an all-time high yesterday as well at about 2956 roughly at that um, level right I think it was at the end of the market we ended up hitting that all-time high and if you guys can see here you know we sold off we hit that 50 SMA support this morning and we bounced to that all-time high before selling off and kind of consolidating for the rest of the day. Going over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, this one ended up closing down 0.13% as well, down $34.04. And the NASDAQ guys down 26 points, down 0.33%. And an interesting thing that I'm actually seeing right now is these futures here in terms of the market futures. Um, take a look at these. You know, the futures are actually dumping right now. You guys can see after market hours, the futures are down quite a bit. We can see the Dow is down about $102 right now when it closed at about 34. So that's about a 70 point drop after market hours. So that's pretty interesting. And you guys can see the S&P is down about $12 right now where it closed at about down $3. So that's about an $8 drop after hours. And the NASDAQ, I actually think it closed down about $18 and it's down about $26 now in terms of the future. So that's another eight point drop after market for the NASDAQ. So that's quite interesting here in terms of um, the major indexes. And if we're just going back to the S&P very quickly so we can see some technicals, you know, like I mentioned over the past couple of videos, you know, the markets have been uptrending and nothing has really changed dramatically from yesterday's video in terms of the technicals. We're simply trading right around that level of resistance from the all-time high back in April of uh, 2019 towards the end of the April month in 2019 when we hit that all-time high at about 29.50. You guys can see, you know, we popped to another all-time high again today, like I mentioned, and it seems like we are consolidating on that old resistance as a new support right now, which could be a sign that we might be popping up even further this upcoming week if we successfully hold this level. But I think if we break this level and we slowly start to maybe sell off and test, let's see this 20-day, one-hour chart very quickly. If we sell off and maybe test that 50 SMA, we may be going down closer to maybe 29.15, 29.20 on the S&P 500. And overall, guys, like I've mentioned in these videos in the past couple, you know, the markets are very overextended right now. Take a look. The RSI is very, very overbought right Right now, we hit that all-time high. It got up to about an 80 RSI, and then we started to sell off. And with the consolidation where we are right now, we're still very overbought, but it brought the RSI down 
to about a 73-74, but anything above 70, guys, is extremely, extremely overbought. So from this one indicator that I'm personally watching here, you know, this is screaming for a pullback on the market. So going over here to the 5-day, five 5-minute, five another technical spot that I'm watching for the S&P 500 is going to be this 180-day SMA on the 5-day, five 5-minute five chart. Take a look at this, guys. You know, this has been a support over the past couple of trading days. We bounced on it here at about 28.90. We bounced on it again at about 29.15. Here yesterday at about 29.30. And it seems like we ended up closing right at this level. And the thing is, guys, the futures, like I said in the beginning of this video, they are trending down a bit after market hours here. So that might be putting the S&P below this 180 SMA here. So next week on Monday, you know, the whole week next week, it's going to be interesting. You know, are we going to potentially open up down here, maybe at like 2940, 2935? If we do, that can trigger a sell-off, you know, on the S&P 500. That's a pretty critical um, technical break there on the five-day, five-minute. And like I said, on the 20 day one hour, if we were to sell off, you know, bring that R side down a bit, if we were to test that 50 SMA here, that would be a pretty healthy pullback. And from there, if we were to break that, you know, that would be a pretty, pretty big um, selling off factor uh, or a uh, confirming factor on a technical basis for the S&P 500. So going over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average very quickly, back on the 184 hour chart, we've been talking about how the Dow is very close to the all-time high. It has not hit the all-time high that it was at back in. Let's take a look on the one-year, one-day very quickly so we can see it. It was back in the beginning of October where we were at nearly $27,000. We're about, I'd say, 120, 130, or rather 230 points away from that all-time high right now. And it seems like we are getting rejected, you know, by that level of resistance because notice how this is a strong resistance. We hit that level again on the 30th of April. We got rejected there and then we sold off the whole month of May like we all know or at least those of us that have been following the markets and now again we're overextended in my opinion. The R size is very high and we're at that resistance yet again. So this is going to be an interesting time for the Dow and again for the entire market guys as the markets continue to get overextended. So I think you know if we hold this old resistance as a new support which we may be doing right now now after market hours, you know, we might be hitting those all-time highs this next week. But again, we see the futures now are down quite a bit. So this can end up, you know, heading into next week. Who knows, guys? You know, if we do end up gapping down, uh, you know, a level that I'm going to be looking at is going to be $26,500. That's going to be the next support on the Dow Jones. If we're going over here to the 20-day one hour, you can see that's going to put us right under or right on top, rather, of the 50 simple moving average here, you know, and also again, that $26,500 level, that's a spot where we could potentially bounce and continue the uptrend. Or if we broke that spot, you know, this can trigger a sell off. We may be heading down to 26,200 again, maybe back down into the 25,000 level for the Dow Jones going over here to the five day, five minute. You know, you guys can see we're pretty much holding yesterday's high at about 26,730 roughly as a new support today after we ran up to about 26,900. And we actually almost hit that all time high this morning, guys, on the Dow. It was very close, but then we started to sell off. So the fact that we closed, you know, on top of yesterday's resistance as a new support, as well as on top of the 180 SMA, that's a pretty good sign. But again, the futures are down right now. So we may be opening, you know, somewhere like this, if this continues into uh, Monday, maybe downwards into the 26,500, 26,600 levels, you know, again, if we do bleed into Monday. So that's what the Dow is looking like right now. You know, everything is still looking intact for the uptrend, uh, you know, on the Dow and the S&P, but mind you guys, be careful. The markets are very overbought at this point, um, you know, based off of some technicals that we use and some indicators that we use on this channel. So the NASDAQ, we said it closed down 26 today, 26 points, and it's bleeding a bit. Um, or actually it closed down about 18, 19, and right now it's at about minus 26. We can see here again, just like the Dow, just like the S&P, this one's holding its uptrend um, pretty nicely here, a support or rather 
whether a resistance that I'm watching on the NASDAQ is at that all-time high at about 78, 79.5 that we hit towards the end of April in 2019. From there, we saw that bloody month of May after we got some tariff, negative tariff news. We all know and remember that, you know, tech stocks were getting very, very bloody. We saw Apple down to about 170. We saw Facebook down to about like 160, 165, something like that. You know, Google, Amazon, you know, Microsoft, Netflix, all of these stocks were down heavily during this time period, dragging down the NASDAQ more than the S&P and the Dow Jones on a percentage basis. And from there, we've rebounded very, very heavily here. And if we go to the 20 day one hour here. We notice how we're still holding that 50 SMA support here on the 20 day one hour chart. And tomorrow, or not tomorrow, guys, Monday, I'm going to be watching, you know, and seeing are we going to hold that and bounce above it? Are we going to break past the 7821 level, which is going to be very critical, in my opinion, for the continuation of the uptrend and for us to hit that all time high? Or, you know, are we going to pull down here, break the support of the 50 SMA, maybe start to trend down? to 7,500 again, which was a very critical resistance before. Now it's a new support, and that would also put us on top of the 180 SMA. You know, these are some things that I'm personally watching. And one thing to also take a look at is on the 184 hour here, the NASDAQ is actually not as overbought as the S&P and the Dow in terms of the RSI level. So that's something to keep an eye on. You know, if we do end up, you know, popping, you know, that could end up hitting us up to, to those all time highs again and then bringing the RSI back up to an overbought spot where at that point it would be pretty cool or not cool. It would be interesting to see a potential um, put play, uh, you know, on some of these tech stocks or maybe on, you know, QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ, um, you know, in terms of an ETF, this could be a pretty cool or a pretty good, I don't know why I keep saying cool, but a pretty good potential play, you know, for a short. So that's kind of the overall market update for today, guys. It was kind of a flat day, but we did see a little run up this morning and then we sold off and then kind of consolidated for the rest of the day, like you guys saw from these technicals. So so let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about this? We're seeing some war um, tensions with Iran right now. You know, we're seeing China and, um, uh, you know, Trump and um China, they're meeting next week in um, Japan. We're seeing, you know, potential rate cut in the month of July. These are very, very strong uh, economic factors that can maybe drop the markets, maybe pop the markets up, you know, what what do you think is going to happen, you know, based on all of these different things that are going on right now, I would love to know what you guys have to think about that, drop a comment, I love talking to you guys down below in the comment section, so let's talk about what I personally did today in terms of my trades, and for those of you guys that watched yesterday's video, I was focusing on gold very, very heavily, and I've been focusing on gold for the past week, two weeks, due to the massive run-up, or really the past three weeks, uh, due to the massive run-up that we've been seeing on gold. We've gone from literally 1280 all the way up to highs today, which actually occurred last night at about 1415. And if we go to this um, five day, you guys can see what I'm talking about here. We popped up to 1415 last night at about 10 p.m. We sold off from there at about to about 1386, which was quite the sell off, guys. And this is kind of what I was talking about in yesterday's video for gold. You know, we were talking about how gold, in my opinion, needed to cool off a bit. And we got quite the cool off. That was about a 30 point drop from 1415 down to about 1386 and this was at about 4:10 a.m. and then we started to um, you know push higher and higher we pulled back for a higher low right near um, the market open and this is actually when I ended up getting into JNUG and JNUG we talked about that in yesterday's video as well JNUG is an ETF that goes up whenever gold is going up and we saw JNUG if we go to JNUG right now this also got um, quite the pullback 
uh, you know, this morning. We were down to about 11.06. We popped up to about 11.55, and then we saw that massive drop to about 10.75 this morning at about 10 a.m. And if we go back to gold, you guys can see, you know, that was this point in time right here when we dropped from 1,400 to 1,394, right? 1,404 roughly down to about 1,394. And the key thing here is, guys, why I took the position was we held a higher low from the previous low that we dumped at um, a couple of hours earlier at about 4.05 a.m. And we held the higher low pretty much just continuing the uptrend. So we got the cool off. We hit a low at about 13.85, higher low at about 13.94, and then we started to trend back up. And at about 10, you know, this is when I started to see a lot of potential in JNUG. And let me show you guys JNUG again. It, it offered about like 6% now that we can see how it did, um, you know, for the rest of the day. But at this point in time, you know, I didn't know it was going to go up 6%, 5%. So the whole goal was for me to get about 1%, 2%, you know, on the trade on this nice little dip buy. And it was kind of just like a gap fill scalp trade in terms of uh, the strategy here, right? From 1150 down to about 1070. You guys can see that was about a 7% open uh, margin of profit. Rather, we got the double bottom here, which is a very good um, technical sign for a bullish reversal um, to the upside. You know, we got the 1077 bottom, then 1077 again, and then we started to aggressively pop. And this was, again, around 10, 11 a.m. when we started to see gold running. So I took a position here at about 10.90, ended up selling off at about 11.05, 11.06. It wasn't a crazy, crazy trade, about a 1.2, 1.3% profit. And the whole thing here, guys, is, you know, strategizing the night before, you know, looking at these patterns and understanding, you know, what is hot at the moment. And today... The, what's been hot, you know, over the past couple of weeks, it's been gold. And I like focusing, not always, but I like focusing most of the time, you know, on, you know, some of these ETFs that have been extremely, extremely volatile and that have been hot, to be quite honest with you guys. Like gold has been, like JNUG, you know, crude oil is another one that's been moving crazy. And it worked well for me today. So let me know down below, you know, what did you guys end up doing? Did you guys catch this move on um, JNUG and gold? What do you guys think about? about gold at this point. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, gold is considered a safe haven in the stock market. It's considered, you know, an asset class that holds its value or, or you know, drops a little bit, maybe gains a little bit during a recession compared to stocks that get killed during a recession or at least most of the stocks, um, you know, out there do. What do you guys think gold's going to do? Do you think gold's going to continue to run? You know, 1400 is a target that a lot of people were setting on gold and and we clearly blew past that target at this point. So are we going to go to 1500 right now? I personally don't know, right, guys? No one out there knows. No one truly knows. But, you know, speaking from a um, longer-term perspective here, we saw back in 2011, you know, gold hit uh, 1923, and then we sold off to about... 1530, which could be the next, you know, resistance that I'm seeing right now on gold, or at least one of the next resistances. We can see here, you know, we're actually at a resistance right now on gold at about 14, or we, rather we hit it a, a couple of hours ago, or, or rather within the past 24 hours at about 1420 to about 1425. That's a resistance right now on gold. You know, if we break that, you know, we could be gapping up to maybe 1500, maybe 1515 maybe 1530 but that is you know I'm not going to call that right now but that is quite uh you know a percentage move away now that's about like a five six probably percent move away and gold's been very very hot so it might cool off a bit before it hits there but these are just targets that I am watching here over these next couple of days so very quickly now guys let's talk about some stocks I'm pulling up my phone here um we saw some actually semi stocks today AMD and Micron in particular they dropped um a decent amount here and I want to show you guys another uh, semi-stock, starting off here with INTC, Intel Corporation. This is one that's looking pretty good on the 184-hour chart here. We dumped from $60 all the way down to about $42. We held the support from back in October as well as back in December of 2018. Very, very nice. We broke out of the 50 SMA resistance here. We started to see you know, a double, triple bottom form there. That's a pretty bullish move for those of you guys that don't know. 
we popped out of the resistances, higher lows, higher highs. We started to hold the 50 SMA, um, you know, as a support. And one thing that we've done recently, which I find very attractive, is we broke the 180 SMA here, and we're also seeing a bullish cross of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 day SMA. So this can be a very bullish sign right now on INTC. And the next resistance that I'm seeing right now is at about $50 for this particular stock, giving it about a four or 5% margin of profit. And at this point, guys, it's at a pretty attractive point right now. You know, we see the RSI, it's not too overbought, not too oversold. It's kind of in the middle here at about 56. Actually, it's a bit more to the upside, a bit more to the overbought side, but it's not extremely, extremely overbought. And what I would like to see you know, of course, is for it to maintain that 50 SMA and for it to eventually get back into $48, that level, and that's a spot where I think could be a very good spot to get into INTC for a trade, maybe even a potential swing trade. So some other ones, you know, AMD, MU, just to keep an eye on them, you know, AMD sold off from $34 all the way down to about $29. We got the massive sell-off due to that Broadcom um, forecast, and their their um, their forecast was very, very poor. That kind of brought a lot of semi-stocks down, including AMD. This might be the hardest drop out of all of them. I'm not exactly positive it is, but it's one that dropped quite a bit. It was about, let's see, about a 10 probably like a 10% drop at least, right? Let me show you guys very quickly. Yeah, it's about a 10, 15% drop. And right now, you know, we got the lower high. We got rejected by the 50 SMA, which is not too good of a sign here. We also broke the $30 level of support, which is another bad sign, but we're still trading above that 180 SMA right now. The RSI is very oversold. So this could be a spot where maybe AMD sees some signs of life. Maybe it does end up bouncing, but if it breaks below, low the 180 SMA if it starts to get back into the 28 level 27 level I'm not going to be watching it at that point because at that point guys it seems like the trend is completely broken and we may be heading back down for AMD MU it's one that's not looking attractive whatsoever on a technical basis in my opinion but we may be seeing the pop here if we do end up breaking above that 50 SMA but I think if we break below 32 that's going to be a pretty bearish sign and we have earnings coming up here um, in a couple of days so be careful about that earnings can heavily fluctuate a stock especially if the earnings are negative but if the earnings are very positive you know it can pop the stock up five ten percent we've seen that happen many many times before so those are just a couple that I'm watching here Disney is another one that's looking pretty decent right now you know we got rejected by 143 we sold off now we're maintaining that trend here as well as above that 50 SMA so this could be a potential potential dip buy on Disney, but it's kind of hard to see or really, um, it's kind of difficult right now for Disney because we did get rejected multiple times at 143. So this could be a temporary top for Disney. But, you know, again, if we do end up holding that 50 SMA, it could offer a little bit of margin of profit. But there are some other ones out there that are more attractive, in my opinion, like INTC. Some of these inverse ETFs like Drip is very attractive, in my opinion. You know, JNUG, you know, those are very uh, more attractive uh, compared to Disney, but Disney still worth watching at this point due to it being a very, very hot stock right now over the past couple of months, ever since they launched and released the pricing for their streaming service and the anticipation of the streaming service that's coming out in the fall of 2019. This has been driving the stock like crazy. So, Disney, you know, if we break out of 140, you know, that could be a bullish or rather 143. That could be a very, very bullish move. And we've seen some analysts, they've raised their price targets on Disney. I believe one analyst had it at like 160 or something like that. You know, one had it, I think maybe at like 170. So there is some decent upside here you know, on Disney. But another thing regarding Disney is my personal opinion, there might be, or there is obviously a lot of hype right now leading up to the release of the streaming service. But once the streaming service does get released, you know, we might see some of the, the, the hype die down. You know, we might see the stock start to fall back to a more reasonable um, valuation, a more reasonable level. And that's kind of what I'm scared about right now. For me personally, I don't know 
own Disney stock, and I do plan on adding it soon. But at these levels, it is very, very high in my personal opinion. I would love to get it, you know, back down to maybe the 110s, 120s, maybe $100. I don't know if we'll get it. Maybe we'll get it soon. Maybe in the next couple of years, we just have to wait on it and see. So TVIX, just to wrap up the video now with uh, with one more, TVIX is an interesting one here. And we can see on the 20-day, one hour, we're breaking out of the 50 SMA here. We're actually making higher highs and higher lows on the 5-day five minute right higher high uh, higher high here higher low at about 1830 another higher low today at about 19 dollars we popped up to about 20 dollars here at the close of the market this is very interesting for a potential breakout play here. Again, the markets, they're very overbought. The markets, you know, see extreme volatility next week if we start to sell off aggressively, if the VIX starts to pop up. And for those of you guys that don't know what the VIX is, the VIX is the volatility index here. If this starts to get back up into the 16s, the 17s, maybe the 18s as the market, if the market gets more volatile, you know, TVIX can continue a nice this nice little run that it's been on over the past two trades trading days. So TVIX, I'm watching it very closely here for the um, potential reversal. And that's pretty much it in terms of what I am watching for, you know, this upcoming week. There's a bunch more, but I don't want to make this video way too long. And I actually wanted to let you guys know on Sundays, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this, but for those of you guys that don't know, on Sundays, I make videos talking about my plan in terms of trading stocks that I'm watching for the upcoming week. And I also take subscriber requests on stocks to talk about. So if you have any stocks you want me to talk about, drop a comment down below right now in the comment section, or if you're in the Discord group chat, which again is linked in the description box, you can go to the call out section there and drop a ticker symbol, an ETF, a stock there, and I'll get to it in Sunday's video. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, again, feel free to hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. If you want to see more content from me, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Drop a comment. Let me know how your week went. What are you watching heading, heading into this next week? What are your thoughts? on the stock market I would love to know and if you guys haven't already followed me on Instagram it's the first link down below in the comment section give me a follow on there shoot me a DM let's talk whatever you guys want to talk about um, on Instagram or discord to talk to you so I'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching peace out